Hello, humans of the world. You are now tuned into Relations Podcast, where me and a new co-host just like you discuss our relations with ourselves, with each other, and our experiences. Are we ready to break the cycles? You know, the ones that live within our learned behaviors. Have you noticed the decisions you make subconsciously? The ones that lead you right back to where you started? Let's take on the healing journey together. Get on this PJ of unconventional conversations conversations and let's travel all the way through our lineage then let's break the cycles link by link ready let's do this hello 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 welcome to relations hello humans of the world we're back for another amazing episode i want to thank everybody for joining for supporting me for just sticking through it and growing with me i really 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 appreciate you So we're here for another one. Today's episode is titled Monogamy is so much fun. And the premise is you married folks are not making marriage appealing at all. (laughs) So before we get to all of that and why I feel this way, um, I want to introduce you to the best part of the show, my VIP guest. And this one is special because I just... I don't know. It's just something. Actually, you know what? Before I even intrude him, I want to kind of point something out, kind of sidebar. There's something about this man's eyes. Like, you know, when you can look at someone and you just can see like the world in their eyes is pretty remarkable. Every time I look at him, I'm like, damn, like what is going on in there? <laughs> I don't think I ever told you that, Stax. Um, so here is Stax. Yo, what's going on? What's going on? You never told me that. I'm glad you did now. So now when you're looking yeah, at Yeah, I wanted it, to share that. Have you, have you heard <laughs> that before? Yeah, it's um, it's kind of weird because people won't say it. They'll just stare at me and like, yo, what's going on? Like, what's happening? One girl told me like I was looking into a soul. It was weird. I, yeah, I heard weird. very weird responses to this. It's yeah. like a... I don't know what it, it's really uh it's a gift I'll say that it's definitely a gift I don't see that I don't think I've ever seen that in anybody else other than you so whatever that is like <laughs> bless, blessings to your eyes <laughs> thank, you, thank you thank you glad to be here well thank you thanks for being here so I always start the episode with how we met so can you can you share a first story of how we met well, yeah, so, you know, on our podcast, so here's a thing podcast, you guys check it out. We were uh, basically just branching out, looking to find people to collab with. And my homeboy, my homeboy Skip, basically just told me, like, look up these few podcasts, and he mentioned you. So after, like, just, just listening to, like, an episode or two, I brought it to my guys. And I was like, yo, bro, I think we should work with, with this relations part at that time we thought it was relations because of how it was spelled <laughs> so everybody calls it relations and i'm like all right fine if y'all want to stick to it fine but it's relations i just have yeah. to work for you, you, told me, you told me what why you named it well why you spelled it that way and i get it but at the time on first glance it just looked like relation but anyway mm-hmm. we reached out and you were like one of the people that like responded and then you were like got with us we collabed that that episode was amazing um, two wasn't there the first time, but luckily we fixed that. We got one in with two the other day, so that was kind of cool. Yeah, but yeah, just basically like a, a reach out, a, a networking slide in the DMs, if you will. Yeah, and I actually I think I'm gonna be releasing this episode the same time that you guys are gonna re- be releasing yours. Oh, actually, I'm doing it this week, so you guys are gonna release that one next week, right? Yeah, yeah, we edited it. Right now. Yeah, it's going to be good. Um, I'm so excited for you guys to listen to it. So anyway, let's get right into it. This is a good one. So I, I want to, there's a couple phrases and um, words that I want to basically give you the definition for that we're going to be using today just for our understanding. So the first one is about marriage, the word mm-hmm. marriage. And this is according to Webster's Dictionary of 1828. So marriage is a contract, both civil and religious, by which the parties engage to live together in a mutual affection and fidelity till death shall separate them. Marriage was instituted by God himself. That's what Webster said. Mm -hmm. For the purpose of preventing promiscuity 
intercourse of the sexes, for promoting domestic felicity, and for securing the maintenance and education of children. Okay. So tell y'all where that came. 1828. That's what Webster said. I was about to say, it sounds pretty old, but yeah. Okay. That's interesting, <laughs> right? So then now I'm going to give you the Google definition of marriage so that we have some reference. Marriage is a union between individual people. The fact of being married is called wedlock. Very often people celebrate that they are getting married. The ceremony is usually called a wedding. And in most of the worlds, this is a union between a man and a woman who becomes husband or wife. So Google hasn't even updated the fact that you can be married to the same sex as well. So they need to update that because um, that's wrong. Right. And then the next word I want to um, define is the word spouse. So spouse is a verb um, and is to wed or to be espoused. Um, the next word is partnership is to joint interest or property. And then I wanted to get more details of what partnership really means. So I found this article by Forbes um, and the, the writer is Wendy Appel and her definition of, of partnership is a commitment to an ongoing relationship. We recognize that breakdowns will occur. When these, this, these happen, we'll do what it takes to move through them. We take responsibility for our reactions and don't blame the other for what it evokes in us. Okay. Huge. Okay. And then this one, shits and giggles, what is compulsory monogamy? So compulsory monogamy is the, so, the social mandate that everyone, especially women, must be in a monogamous relationship in order to be considered a morally un unstanding adult. As the root of polytheoby, which is the compulsory monogamy, is embedded in norms, laws, and institutions. Huh, right? mouthful. That was a lot. Um, so we'll process that, right? So marriage is so much fun. Psych! I saw the IG meme that said, you married folks are not making marriage appealing at all. So from my experience, married people don't make good saleswomen or salesmen. Actually, I feel like they are those bad car salespeople trying to sell me what they're not even buying. It's very <laughs> how we can convince ourselves of this custom-made idea that is consistently showing us it is not functional for the majority of people. Maybe it is okay for some, but most of us are failing at this miserably. But why? How can we recreate marriage in our own way and evolve this bad reputation? So, Sax, talk to me. What are, what are married folks showing you about marriage? Well, the first thing is to answer your original, the original thing you said, where mm -hmm. they're not making it fun. It's not fun to us because the delivery that they're using isn't really conducive to the society we live in. You get what I'm saying? Tell me so more. All the successful marriages that people use as reference point reference points are usually like their grandparents, great grandparents, old older couples that. Locked in for about 25 plus years, right? Mm -hmm. And at that time, it was a different construct. With, look, look at the definitions you just gave me. Like, Google didn't even update that men and men can marry, women and women can marry. You can clear your gender and marry. Like, there's so many updates going on. So I guess the delivery, in my opinion, the delivery of it is not, is not being, like, updated as well as the society is. So now... When you like someone like in a millennial age or Gen Z or whatever they call it now, when you try to talk to that that person, it's just like, yeah, but why would I sign up to just live? You look miserable every day. Like, why would I sign up for that? You know, mm -hmm. like, why I don't see what, like my little brother's like, bro, why would, why would you just like sign up to marry somebody? And spend your time trying to be away from that person, be away from that love that you you're showing. So I guess it's all about the the person that's delivering the message and their example of it. I yeah, guess. and and I feel like most people fall into that category, right? Is like the people that are married, but like they don't look happy. 
but I don't see that many ha- ma- happy married people. Or if they're happy, they're happy for like the first year or two. And then like, I just see like desperation. I mean, I've seen men by themselves separated from like, let's say they, they go on vacation and and they're with their boys and they just like unleash these, these like animals and demons within themselves. And I'm like, I don't That's want true. my man to feel like he has to be an animal every time he like leaves my side. I'm sorry, but like, no. <laughs> it's also too like, not to cut you off, Mel, but it's also mm-hmm. like, you can... You can see like there the op- like the options are readily available for you now. Like you can realize like yo, I don't have to marry you to have a baby or be success. Like that con- like that whole yo, you need to get married, have a family, be successful, blah blah blah. Same thing like college. Like you need to go to college and graduate. And, yo, the the newer generations are seeing like I can be successful and live a happy life and do all of this without locking in. So now it's more like it's getting back to the root of the marriage where it's like they're looking at it more like a business thing as opposed to what it conformed into along the line somewhere into love. Like no one's really paying attention to the love thing. And I don't know if you ever heard me say it in my episodes, but it's just like to me, me, love is one of the most minute reasons to get married. That's me. You feel me? I agree. I agree. And that's just an example now to see like how people my age and similar are looking at it. Like I rather just make sure the business of our marriage, like when I get married to you, I'm marrying into your debt. Why would I want to do that? <laughs> like, Facts. And a lot of the, um, there's a thing, there's like the, the first three years of a marriage, the first five, the first seven. And then sometimes like the first 10, like these are real stigmas. Like people fall yeah. off. You feel yeah. me? And why would I sign up for that if majority of the time marriages fail is because of financial reasons? Sometimes, I mean, a lot of the times it's adultery, but real like married couple who are really married, married, mm-hmm. they usually go through some type of financial strain because yeah. you got married to this this person and you don't know their they credit history or you don't know how they manage money or, you know what I mean? Like, it's a lot yeah. of like underprepared marriages going on and that's why divorce is like a booming business in America. Underprepared. That's a good word. So I, you did point something good out, though. Like in both of the definitions that I read about marriage, nothing was mentioned about love. Not one At thing. All. At all. <laughs> <laughs> so when it's, it's like we're subconsciously we're like led to believe that it has to be about love. And they teach us that it has to be about love. But in reality, that has nothing to do with it, really. At all, and that's the that's the biggest part because you go into it, you go into it, and then you know what's funny is like, you know when you at work, and the weakest employee trains another employee, so that employee just in inherently becomes weak as well. Yeah, that's how marriage couples have become. So it's like, yeah, bro, you grow up, you find somebody you fall in love with, and you marry them, and then those that couple then tells another young couple, yeah, bro. You, you know what I mean? You find somebody, you love them. They don't tell you about, yo, bro, this family is now your family. So when the, let's say the drug, the drug addict uncle, you know, in our communities, we have these type of problems, right? No one tells this person that you're marrying into a family full of addicts. You're marrying into a family full of mental health illnesses. No one, t- like all of these lead to financial strains, lead to people just finding other variants to just like release and love then goes out the window. Cause I love you, but now I'm here cause I'm married to you. Mm. So now when the love gets real small and all the other elements start to take over. Right. Really- yeah. yeah. It is very, very, very well, weird. Well, and I never- <laughs> <laughs> this whole life is weird. Right. Um, yeah. it's, it's so ironic though, that you broke it down that way because I haven't heard it in that format before, but that's like a hundred percent accurate. So then what, how, why are people so infatuated with the idea of marriage rather than what marriage actually is? Well, I think people are fascinated about marriage because like I said, how it's portrayed, like the cookie cutter American dream. You find you a a, a husband or wife, get you a house with a white picket fence, get a dog. Every, they always say that every house deserves a dog and 
you move <laughs> off to live in a suburb somewhere and you enjoy your life. So I think the fascination comes from that, like how it's, like I said, in, in originally, like it's just how it's being delivered. The American it's, dream. Yeah, it's just how it's being delivered is just like throwing people off the actual base meaning of it. But yeah. I think my grandfather used to tell me back in the day, like you marry somebody to like, you could do it for political gain. You could do it for religious gain. You could do it for financial gain. No one said anything about love at that point. But my whole life, I was taught to marry somebody you love, marry the person you feel like you could spend the rest of your life with. Right. Right. And look at what you value, what your values are. I, you know, I think that people are just infatuated with the idea. Like, I think that a lot of people is like, oh, I just want a partner. So I don't have to be by myself and single, but they don't Mm -hmm. think about like the work that it takes, like the effort that it takes to partner up with someone in your life. Right. Right. Especially women, women romanticize marriage to a, a different level of degree that I can't comprehend. I think that it's unrealistic um and i think I, I actually blame men a lot because i feel like men are not honest with women about i'm gonna be i'm gonna be honest <laughs> listen to me thoroughly i feel like men are not honest with women about the reality of things i think that men is like oh they just feed into like yeah like, just make the woman happy and everything will be okay so then she thinks like oh well if he's doing everything for me then i'm good and then in reality, he's living a double life and he's saying some different things or thinking some different things about his wife because he's like, well, I'll just buy her some stuff. I'll make sure the bills are paid. I'll take it. I'll do what I'm supposed to do, which is provide and protect. And if I provide and protect, that's OK. And I just say yes to everything that she wants and she wins. But that never grows. Right. Like, why, why are we not telling women like, girl, it's not all about you. You need to take accountability for your actions. This is a lot of reasons why I don't like you. I might love you, but there's some things I don't like about you. And mm-hmm. and I know that it's scary to do that because, you know, men are scared to tell women the truth because women are nuts. And, you know, they don't want to lose. No, I only object with this point, right? Mm-hmm. Men possibly could have been telling the truth, but then you have the stigma of if he's not doing what you want, go find somebody else. Right. So simply... Like, look at Beyonce. If you like me, you should have put a ring on it, right? Mm-hmm. So now this person probably was telling her the truth. I don't want to use her past that example. But mm-hmm. this person probably could have told a woman the truth, and then she ain't like how it was delivered or she ain't like how he said it or whatever the case may be. And then she just dumped him to go find somebody that basically would be a yes man to her. Like, yeah, it's somebody that she could manipulate. Yeah, manipulate the man is what the what we're taught to do. But like, why the hell do I want to coerce a man to have to put a ring on it? Like, I'm sorry. I don't want a man to be married to me because I taught him how to treat me and I coerced him to know my worth. And I, I'm sorry. Like, you either with it or you're not, bro. Like, I don't have time for all of that. Right? But we're taught that that's what we need to do. Or you need to train him. Like, is he a dog or is he a man? Like, do you want an equal or do you want a puppy? Well, here's another thing too, right, Mel? Like, I don't look at it as training, but you do need to teach someone how to love you, because love is love is. But that's love languages, right? That right. right? So yeah. people can look at that as a form of training, right? But I don't think it's training in one way. I think you know what I'm saying because you're learning me, I'm learning you, right? Yeah, but women don't see it that way. Is he supposed to learn me and? Mm-hmm. Then we all going to do what I want to do. Mm-hmm. That's, That's where I'm at now. Like, I always tell people, and I get, I you know, I get flack for it a lot with my friend groups, but it's like, there's certain things I'm willing to lose a relationship over. Mm-hmm. Like, there, there has to be certain things you're willing to just lose the relationship over. And I feel like being coerced or forced into marriage, mm-hmm. I stand on that. Because if if it goes south and I go, yeah, we didn't get married because, I mean, we didn't work out because she wanted to get married at that particular time and I didn't. I'm okay with that. You know what I'm saying? That's that's something I could hang my hat on and go, yeah, you're right. I'm, I'll do it again. But a lot of people are not doing that. Like a lot of people are forced into it because they feel like they'll lose this person and this person was the best. Nah, bro, like. You gotta be able to stand on something and believe in that. And that's what I preach the most. Like guns are say it, Dre say it. Like we all gonna do that right now, funny enough. 
like, yeah, I'm standing on this. Like, I'm not ready. I'm not going to just jump into that because I'm trying to do that jump once because it's cheaper to keep her. And that's mm-hmm. real. <laughs> oh, so I, sometimes a divorce costs more than a wedding. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'd rather not go do that. I'd rather just do this once and live my life. Yeah, I hear you. I think um, it's just the misunderstandings of of why we're jumping into it. And I, I'm glad to see men standing up for themselves now. Like, I think it's happening more, especially, I mean, you're younger than you're younger than me. So my group of people are in my like, three. Three. You only got me by three. Yeah, it's not long, but what I'm saying is in my in my in my age group, where people are feeling a lot more pressure than in your age group. Like you guys are just like the women in your age group are just starting to feel that pressure. The women in my age group, they're suddenly they're like, you know what, whatever. I want a baby, I'm gonna just do what I need to do, right? Um, and so there's more of a push and a rush. So I think mm-hmm. that the aging thing is also a misconception. And and since we're talking about misconceptions, like what are some misunderstandings about marriage? So I wrote a, a couple here. Um, the first one is that we are not individuals. So this whole idea, like you're half of something and you're meeting your other half and then you're coming together thing is so odd to me because I'm I'm a whole person and I don't understand when people became half. So that's weird. <laughs> the second thing is um, it's added value and not the value, meaning that you are building your value as a person and, and your place on this earth separate from this being. You don't have to get married or fight or find a partner to be valuable, to find value in life and your experiences. You can start living your life now. And then when you meet someone, then you can continue living with them. You don't start when you find your partner. Absolutely. And um, there are many factors that to a satisfying marriage relationship um, and for it to actually be happy. Um, And these are some things that no one talks about. Um, So commitment, trust, time, attention, good communication and comprehension, partnership, tolerance, patience, openness, honesty, respect, sharing, consideration, generosity, willingness and ability to compromise and being constructive. Um, so those are just some, I feel like, you know, everybody just goes to the love part, but like there's a whole lot of other things. Um, and we like to ignore these things because nobody wants to compromise anything. Um, so I just wanted to highlight that. Do you have any other that you would want to add? I, no, I, the funny thing is I wouldn't add any of that. Well, I can't add anything else. It's just like when you add something new though to a marriage, whether it be, you know, the loss of a job or the gain of a job. Mm-hmm. You know, so the income fluctuates. There's also like babies. <laughs> like if you if you reproduce, that in itself is enough to split the marriage again. So I get what you're saying going into it where you're not a whole you're not half of a person. I'm not half of a person. So you need to find somebody that's strong and standing in what they are. Because when you do produce, that baby becomes a whole part of half of y'all. If that makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah. That's so awesome. now that baby, along with whatever, if you wasn't solid before, before you got married, when you had a baby, that now that baby now puts a strain on y'all already existing relationship with wow. all of its flaws and with all of its gains. Like it just magnifies everything else. So yeah. that'd be something to watch out for. Like the misconception is you have a baby. Like I say, you live the American dream, but it's like, you're going to raise that baby how you were raised. I wasn't raised how you were raised. So I'm going to raise the baby how I feel like it should be raised. They go clashing right there. Mm. And then that just, that just births a whole new energy. And it, it's, it's rough. It's a tricky, mm-hmm. it's a tricky thing to, to maneuver, but it's possible. Yeah, I've it's seen, possible. I've seen marriages. I've seen failed marriages. I've seen marriages in my in my community now, where it's just like they get married for some unconventional reason, whether it be papers or whatever it is, and they actually like rock it out. Yeah, I've seen that too. And then I've seen people get married for that same reason and. Don't even get the papers. Now you're just out twenty five thousand or whatever the case is, but it's rough. Yeah, it's a, it's a gamble. It's a gamble. It's just like stocks out here in these streets. 
Like, it really is, bro. Like, right? Like, like um, I said, whatever you're hiding, whatever you're hiding in your relationship, if you don't stand tall behind it, whenever you add another element to it, whatever you're hiding will come out. You mm, get what I mean? Yeah. You, you right? got to for yourself. There's a lot of people lying to themselves. That's the problem. That's what I'm saying. So if you know, like, People always talk about let's let's say the adultery, right? Like you didn't get all your wild oats out, you ain't you ain't do what you needed to do. Like if you go into a situation knowing that's a problem mm. and you don't address the problem, it's just gonna magnify when you get married. Like now, like more's at stake. Right. But now the y'all bought together, you out of there. And you still gotta pay for the house. <laughs> Bless like, your heart, bless your heart. So do you, do you think do you think that people have unrealistic expectations about marriage? I don't think it's unrealistic because it like I said, it's weird how it's being delivered because there are possible not possible, there are examples of the successful like there are examples to the to the human eye, right? Because we don't know what's going on in between their in you know in their house. We don't know. But to the naked eye, it seems successful. So I don't think it's unrealistic. It's just you got to be realistic with yourself. Mm-hmm. Like it, I always say, as soon as you figure out that there's no timetable to life, you'll mm-hmm. be fine. Yeah. But then all that pressure that, like you say, your women in your age group is going through, bro. You could get married at f- like 50 years old. It doesn't matter. Like it doesn't matter. Just make sure when you do get married, you're getting married for the reasons you deem valuable. Yeah, yeah. I think realistic. Yeah, but I, I think there are some unrealistic expectations just to get into like more details. So like gender roles, for instance, there's a lot of expectations that, oh, when I get married, now I have to do X because now because I'm the woman or I have to do X because I'm the man. So <laughs> everybody wants to like fall into this like position role. Right in the marriage. You hate gender roles, <laughs> you hate gender roles boy. <laughs> I just don't get it. I don't comprehend it. I just don't. It's not my. It's not up to my comprehension. I understand that there's innate things that happen with males, and there's innate things that happen with females. Right, right. innately. Yeah. Then there's just things that we're doing because we feel like we have to do it because we were taught that that's what we should be doing based on our organs and i just don't comprehend that what what what, what's some examples please tell me so one for instance um the woman has to be the caretaker in the household okay i've seen men being cared i've seen men be more like big better chefs than women i've seen men be better cleaners than women like i just don't i don't believe as a man you shouldn't know how to take care of a household because you're a man. Like, I hope you've been taking care of yourself this whole time before I met you. Like, you weren't being dirty and waiting for me to clean up after you because I don't got time. That's a fact. Right? That's a, some men are way more domesticated than some women are. And, and that makes sense. Pra- honestly, like, I'm one of those guys because I rather, I like to eat. I like to eat what I like to eat. And I like to just try things. So I'd rather just cook anyway. Now, do you want to eat? Or do you want to figure out? But I, like I said, you hate gender roles. I hate calling it gender roles because I don't. I just feel like bring whatever you're gonna bring to this, and we are gonna make it work. I, mm-hmm. I don't want to go into that situation where I'm like, I actually had an argument about that not too long ago. It's like you're not gonna find another girl like me. Like I cook, I clean. I'm like, but I could do all that shit myself. Like, why are you acting like you do me a favor? Stop. That, was that your? Was that your? Your fighting. That like why you do what? Why is that your main argument? Because that's <laughs> what because it's the con- this is what I'm trying to explain to you is the conditioning that mm-hmm. you doing it and she's not doing it then, then she's less of a woman. Like that's what's led to believe. If you're not falling into your gender role, then there's something wrong with you. Right. Point blank. Period. That's a problem. I think. Mm-hmm. Another misconception is that it's all about sex, right? So the idea is now I'm married, so I can have sex whenever I want. Like that's it. We get free grabs. Do you agree with that? I was having sex before I got married, so I just—I mean, I'm still not married, but I'm just saying, like, 
I have all the sex I want right now. <laughs> but, a lot of people, but you know, a lot of people, marriage is connected to sex, right? Because a lot of people, you know, re- who are religious based or cultural based is like, well, until we're married, we can't have sex. So why are we connecting sex to marriage? I don't know, because none of the definitions made that being part of it. At so, all. But wait, wait, you said something in the beginning, though, like the 1812 definition. Oh, 1828. So, yeah, part which parties engaged live together in mutual affection and fidelity. So, death do you part. Marriage is an institution by God Himself for the purpose of preventing the promiscuous intercourse of the sexes. Meaning that now that you're married, you're free. You're free because now you can have sex whenever you want with your partner. Right. So, you so should- I guess that's like an old construct then, because like I yes, said, 18, I- 1828. Yeah. I have sex with whoever I want, whenever I want. Now, well, not well, whoever. Well, someone who agrees to have sex with you. Well, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, like, consensual <laughs> sex with whoever is consenting. Right. right. Correct. I just feel like, I don't think that should be a factor in marriage. Like, there are, there, and to take this out of religion, like, religion does teach, yes. mm-hmm. you know, certain things. And we can argue religion till the world is over. Right. As far as like the cultural parts, it, to me, it don't make sense. I, I never understood that part. Like why, why relating that to, why relate sex to marriage? Like I, I didn't get it. Yeah, it's, it's well, I could be, I could be misinformed as well. Because like I said, I once I got out the porch, it wasn't telling me to not have sex again. Like <laughs> once you did, I always tell people, bro, like, once you try this. <laughs> There's no going back. It's real often not not do this till you get married. Wait, wait, is, is it? Would you equate it to crack? <laughs> so I don't but, know. But, but what I'm saying is, most people that do crack, they don't go like they always go back. Look, man, power to them. <laughs> this is equivalent to knowing that you got money coming in every two weeks. You ain't you. Once you lose that, you're gonna be real upset. I can tell you that. That's <laughs> that is facts. So I want to um I want to share 10 unspoken marriage rules just you must follow and this was written by Don Papandaria. So I just want to share it cuz I thought this was interesting. So she wrote the first one don't criticize your par- your partner's parents or friends. Two, tell your spouse about any ex encounters. Three, keep unsolicited advice to yourself. Four, don't take charge all the time. Five, don't bring up past arguments. Six, choose your battles, but don't stifle your don't stifle your feelings. Seven, don't post private thoughts or photos publicly. Eight, log log off. Nine, don't use the D word, divorce. That is okay. And 10, be each other's number one. What are your thoughts? I like to be each other's number one thing. I agree with don't post public, don't post private thoughts publicly. Um, the talking about the parents and stuff, though, that's weird. Mm-hmm. Because why would you do that anyway? Right. <laughs> People do that. People do that. Yeah, but now that that's your in laws. So if you, I don't know. People, there's a lot of in law issues out here that cause divorces for sure. No, that definitely is a big factor too. And then the D word thing, like, I agree to an extent. Like, let's not play with that word because once it comes up, once we're finding ourselves using that word freely in conversation, this marriage is already on a on a southern trajectory, and it's not cool. Like, if we're going to fight for it, let's fight for it. But let's hold off on that word because it's such a, that's a heavy word. That's a heavy word. And um, I think there was another one that you said. What was the first two? The first two is don't criticize your partner's parents or friends. And two, tell your spouse about any ex encounters. We just spoke about that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we just spoke about that. I told you I'm emotion I'm not emotionally secured. Like I can't imagine if I'm married. I just wanna know. I just wanna know, but I don't wanna know. Right. I yeah. wanna know so I'm not talked about 
in an embarrassing way. Right. But it really doesn't affect me because mm. what you did before me doesn't affect me now. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. Yeah, unless you have to be confronted with that person. Exactly. But that's it. So in closing, what have we unlearned? We unlearned that marriage is uh, the way that that we're doing it right now is not fun. The good news is we have the resources, understanding, and the luxury to choose. We can choose to do it differently in the best way that it will work for us and our partners and anyone or everyone involved. Making an adult agreement that benefits both or more people is the key. Let's get together and heal our inner child wounds and begin to create the evolved version of a healthy relationship, which is based on choice, agreement, communication, rather than codependency, force, control, and a timeline to fulfill other people's expectations. It's time and the time is now. Thank you so much, Stacks, for being here. I really appreciate you. You're everything. Um, I hope you enjoyed this conversation as much as I did. Of course I did. Let's make it happen again soon. You know, this is what we do. Of course. Whenever. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Later, y'all. Thanks for listening. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. Remember to subscribe and follow on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and YouTube at Relations Podcast via The Diary of MR. M as in Melissa, R as in Rosario. And now the best part, here are the after credits, a message from my co-host. Hey man, it's your boy Stizzy, man. Today's conversation was cool. We talked about marriage. We talked about deconstructing Deconstructing the uh, the stigmas around marriage is what makes a healthy marriage. And I feel like if you're going to go down that path, understand that it's more more than just love. It's more than just finances. It's everything you're doing on your individual side along with whatever that your partner is doing. And I really think you should think about it, create a healthy environment, create a healthy relationship. And you know what I mean? Just be strong and be, be who you are. Be 100% authentic. Uh, if you like these conversations, we have similar conversations over at the So Here's The Thing podcast. You could check us out on Instagram at so here's the thing dot pod, Or if the social media thing is not your thing, you can just hit us in the email, so here's the thing at yahoo.com. And we on any way you could get your podcast. Holla at me, man. Stizzy. <laughs>